hey guys welcome to another video in this one we're going to improve the terminal particularly zeta shell now um if you don't remember if you don't know or you don't remember the difference between the console the terminal and the shell uh take a look at my previous video called console versus terminal versus shell as a quick reminder the uh, words console and terminal uh, nowadays refer to our to what are actually terminal emulators uh, but we're just going to call them console or terminal, um, like like everyone does, of course. Now, um, we're not actually going to improve the terminal. We're going to improve the shell, right? So what does that mean? So we're going to improve the prompt, and the prompt is controlled by the shell. Um, and let's take, the, let's take a look at the prompt here. So what do we have? We have, by default, the, um, the current user, and we have the name of the computer we are in. Now... For me, this is not very useful because this is my personal computer. This is always the same user. And of course, this is always the same computer. So this, is, this information is not relevant for me particularly. Then we have the folder. Uh, I guess that's useful, but I ideally I would want to see the full path. And also, I'd like the shell to show me, uh, to print a prompt that also shows me um, the branch I'm in and whether or not that branch is dirty, right? Um, so I want the, the, the shell to automatically detect whether or not this is a Git repository uh, and then to show me that information in case it is. Um, we're, we are also going to improve uh, a, a few settings, a few features here. Like uh, we're going to set the cursor to blink because if it doesn't blink, we don't really know that the terminal is selected. And we are also going to uh, add auto completion, which is obviously uh, absolutely important and fundamental for productivity. So when you write a command like get, for example, you will have the shell auto complete the options for you, which is really, really cool. Just like you have on, on VS Code itself. OK, so let's get to it. Now, if you're using Zeta Shell, in order to install a theme, um, you have to first install Oh My Zeta Shell, which is a configuration manager. So there's nothing much you need to do with this. You just install it. And then once you install it, you will have access to a few folders, right? Um, you have a folder for plugins, so you'll be able to install plugins, templates, themes. Uh, if you're interested in this, explore. Um, but uh, I'm only interested in installing a theme. And you're kind of seeing a little bit of the theme here, even though that character is not rendering correctly because the font is not set. Um, uh, I'm going to use, uh, oh, before I show you what I'm going to use, uh, you have this uh, repository here with a, with a bunch of themes that you can choose for uh, Zeta Shell. And of course, each, each theme will change the prompt and will change the syntax highlighting uh for several commands so you have really a lot to choose from the theme i'm going with is of course cobalt 2 which is my favorite theme and the only thing you have to do is download this file right here and you have to put it in that folder right there right in the themes folder and i of course have already done that so once you do that uh then uh, you have to come into the .zeta-shell-rc file and you have to change your theme to Cobalt. So I believe that by default this is empty, so there's no theme, and uh, you just set Cobalt 2. And as soon as you do that, you have to run source and then you ask zeta-shell to reload that file and it will load that theme and print it out to you. Okay, but uh, as you've seen before, it's not rendering uh, some of the symbols correctly because the default font for VS Code, and I have the default font on purpose just to show you this, does not have powerline symbols. So how do we fix this? Well, we fix this by, of course, changing to a font that does have powerline symbols. <laughs> and um, there's something, there's, there's a little nuance here that I want to, you to be aware there we have an option we have a font family for the integrated terminal but if you just set the font family for the editor the terminal will automatically inherit that font so because i have uh 
because I want this font as well on the terminal. I don't really need this, but I do want to remove this dependency. So I do set it manually just in case I want to change this one without changing that one. Um, and of course, I'm using operator mono with ligatures and it does have power line symbols and a few more improvements. I want um, the terminal, the font size in the terminal to have this to, to be the same size as the text. So let's uh, pump that up a little bit. I also want the cursor line, the cursor to be or the cursor style to be a line instead of a block. Let's change that to a line. And um, like I said before, uh, the cursor doesn't blink by default, which is kind of annoying because then you don't know the terminal is selected. So let's have it blink. And now if you select it, it's blinking. And if you have several terminals, uh, you know that the one that's blinking is the one selected. And then lastly, we're going to improve or uh, increase the buffer. So by default, you are able to see a thousand lines. Um, but I have gotten myself into a situation where I actually needed to look further back. So I will change this to 5,000 lines just to make sure that doesn't happen. All right, that's pretty cool. In, in, with this prompt, we have the, um, the full path. That's pretty cool. We also have the branch we are on. And the fact that it's yellow is telling me that the workspace is dirty. So we have changes to commit if we want. Okay, that's pretty cool. Let me show you what a clean branch looks like. So a clean branch looks like this. It says, okay, you're on the master branch and your workspace is clean. There are no changes to be committed, so it's green. Okay, pretty pretty cool. The last thing we want is when you when we write a command like git, for example, we want to have auto completion within the terminal as well, just like we have on while we are writing code. So in order to do that, we have to install um, a little uh, a little command or sorry a little program here called fig. You can either brew install fig or just download it. And uh, once you do, so let me fire that up. Once you do, you'll have access to this dashboard, and then you can come to the settings right here and integrations right here. And then you have, uh, you can choose where you want to enable fig for. And of course I'm enabling fig for uh, all of my terminals, even though I pretty much just use the integrated terminal in VS Code. So once you have that, and it's gonna be running there, now when you write a command like git, you will have auto completion. Oh, this is pretty cool. So pretty good improvement uh, over the, the terminal. Um, okay, so what did we change? We changed the prompt. The prompt is controlled by the shell. Um, the shell detects whether or not we are in a Git repository. And then if we are, it uh, prints this extra uh, piece of the prompt and it shows us the branch we are on and whether or not it's dirty. And we also have a few uh, visual improvements and uh, buffer improvements and auto completion. Pretty good. Okay, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. See you guys in the next one. Bye-bye.